Good morning. It's pretty early in the day. We've got a lot we need to get accomplished. And one of the things that we need to do is we need to start our green tomato relish or what you would call chow chow. That's what we call it. This is one of my father-in-law's favorite things. Yesterday we pulled up a lot of struggling tomato plants um, in the garden to prepare everything for fall and for bringing the fall plants in. And when you pick green tomatoes, you need to process them quickly because they're not going to stay green very long. I actually had these wrenched yesterday and had them in a bowl covered up overnight ready to, um, to cut. And when I got up this morning, there was a few on top already turning colors. It does not take long. So if you do this, be prepared to do it quickly. I am a little unprepared in a couple of my ingredients. So I'm going to go ahead and start this process with these green tomatoes. And you have to let it sit. They say typically overnight. So for today, it's going to be all day. And then I'm going to bring in the other things that we need. And we won't finish this until um, probably tomorrow. But that's okay. As long as this part gets done and the salt gets added, we can take care of the rest tomorrow. So as you can see, we had quite a bit here. The recipe calls for approximately 12 pounds of green tomatoes. I use a food processor, handy dandy food processor. I have a pot here for scraps because you still, well, you can't see my pot. You still want to get all the little yucky parts out. My tomatoes ranged in size from little bitty to pretty large. So we're going to cut these last few. I'm trying a different angle with my phone today. <clears throat> the reason that you don't see much of my kitchen is my kitchen is very small. I do primarily all of my cooking on this little, this is a three foot piece of counter. This is pretty much where I do all of my cooking and processing. I don't have counter space. I don't have cabinet space. And in order to see what I'm doing, the way that my, my kitchen is shaped, um, you just wouldn't be able to see what I was doing. So most of the time, this is why they're close up like this. I figured you're much more interested in what we're making than in what the kitchen looks like. It's an old house. We love it here, but it's not a fancy modern kitchen for sure. All right. See, this one's trying. There's just a hint, just a hint where it's trying to turn. And I may have my food processor too full on this last round. But we're going to try it. I might take a few out. It's not going to hurt. We can put them back in. Got to make some noise. Put it on low. Okay. A lot of juice. This actually smells really good. There's nothing in here but green tomatoes yet. It smells wonderful. Make sure everything's clean. Cut all the yucky stuff out. Since I put it back in here, I got a little something, something. A little dirt on there. When I got done soaking these, the water was filthy. I mean, they really were dirty. Closer for you to see now. Back to the you make a batch of this, <clears throat> depending on how much you eat. For our family, I actually do make this primarily for my father-in-law and for a few friends. <clears throat> but um, if your family enjoys it, this will last you a year easy. But for us, it's a good two years before we have to make more again. Okay. This is a big old bowl. As you can see, oh my goodness, it's heavy. It is full. This is just green tomatoes. Now. <coughs> excuse me to this you're going to add eight large onions it's up to you what kind of onions it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be specific just eight good clean firm large onions you want to add six of your favorite hot pepper I occasionally add a couple extra that's just me if you want to make it super hot add what you want if you want to make it very mild or you can even leave the hot peppers out but a lot of people that's what they like they like that little hint of heat um and then we're going to add, it says three tablespoons of salt. 
you know how we do it here. We just eyeball it. Three tablespoons of salt. Now you're supposed to, I'm going to tell you the directions and then I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. You're supposed to have your onions and your peppers and your green tomatoes all chopped. Oh, and you also need, sorry, I almost forgot, 10 bell peppers to add to this. So let's, let's do this again. 12 pounds of green tomatoes, eight large onions. I'm double checking to make sure I do this right. 10 bell peppers and six hot peppers. You can adjust it to suit your needs. They're not going to go wrong with this. They want you to sprinkle it with three tablespoons of salt. Now, since I don't have all the things I need, but I need to start this process, so it'll quit trying to turn red on me. I've had these picked for less than 24 hours. I'm going to go ahead and have this chopped. And then when I come back in later um, from town, then we will add all the peppers and everything. And then you need to let it sit either all through the day or overnight until the next morning, depending on when you make this. Okay. And by doing that, <clears throat> Sitting overnight, all the salt's going to draw all of the extra moisture out, and that's going to help your relish. So stir your salt in. There's already a lot of green tomato juice. I'm not sure with the peppers and everything, it'd be pretty salty, though. I just wonder if it would make a good brine to use for something else. That's a thought. And then you wouldn't waste it, right? Because as you can tell, there's already a lot of juice. See the juice down in there? There's quite a bit. All right, I'm gonna add a little more salt. I know. This way I don't have to add it when I add the peppers. It'll be ready to go. All I have to do is stir the peppers in. But it does smell really good. I know a lot of people like to fry their green tomatoes. A lot of these were really tiny, so they wouldn't have been good for frying. And there was a few that would have been good for slicing and frying. And then, of course, you have the chow chow. And I'm not sure of any other ways to use green tomatoes um, to make toes. It is early in the morning for my mouth. <laughs> anyway, if you've got a neat way to use up green tomatoes, let me know. I'm all ears. Okay. Now, I'm just going to smooth her down. Cover it with a towel. Keep it safe from any pest bugs or nosy cats. This is my old flower sack towel. See all the stains? I have used this for everything. Actually, it has rings because I had jars sitting on it last night. Okay, we're gonna leave this sit until this evening and I'm gonna bring everything else, chop it, throw it in, mix it, and then we'll show you the next process. Good morning, welcome back. You ever just wake up tired? Because I sure have this morning. I was up till about midnight last night. Here it is early again. But here's the chow chow. I went ahead and chopped the bell peppers and the onions. Mixed them in last night. I didn't video that part because it was about 11 o'clock at night when I did it. And I just wanted to get it over with. <clears throat> but anyway, it's here. And now is the, the smell. I don't want to say odor, but this is very strong, so it's definitely going to be potent. We're going to strain it into this strainer. I think I'm going to try to save the juice as a brine. I just don't know what I'm going to use it for yet, but I kind of hate to waste it, so we're going to try it. If you have any ideas for a neat way to use a brine besides pickles, because holy moly, I got enough pickles right now. Something different. I don't know. I'm going to have to think about it, but if you have an idea, let me know, because I'm I think I want to use it. Anyway, we're going to strain it into here. And once we strain it, we're going to add the rest of our ingredients into this pot and bring it up to a boil. All right, here we go. Once again, we have tomatoes, jalapenos. I put eight in. They were pretty good size. Um, onions, bell peppers, and salt and all of this juice that you see is just from it sitting in the salt <clears throat> and this sat a little bit longer than usual because I had so much to do yesterday and didn't have all my ingredients right off the bat you hear it draining now 
Yeah, I definitely think I'm going to bring this brine up to a boil. And can it. I think it'll be good. Check it out. What do you think? I'll strain it again to get the last few little particles out, little pieces of green tomato. I'm trying not to touch my face because of the jalapenos, but my nose is itching. Woo! Anyway, what to do with it? What to do with it? I don't want to waste it, but I've never saved it before, so totally perplexed. We'll think about that later. All right, let's move you over so you can see the pot. Okay, we got a full pot of chow, of chow chow now. I'm going to put it on a medium heat, and this is what I'm going to add to it, okay? First of all, I'm going to add one quart of apple cider vinegar. And all right, we strain off all that extra juice just to throw in some cider vinegar. Trust me, it works. I'm giving it a good... Good stir, okay? Next, we're supposed to add three, <clears throat> excuse me, morning, Harley, three tablespoons of dry mustard. Mama doesn't have dry mustard and I'm not driving a long way to get to it, so guess what I'm using? Use what you got, right? It's not gonna change thing. I've actually done this before, so we're just gonna shoot. All right, that should be plenty. Somebody's going to say, that's sacrilegious. Well, you do what you can with what you got. And it's still yummy. For those that have never made chow chow and you don't know how you want to use it, my father-in-law's favorite way to eat it is with ham and beans and cornbread. Some people just use it just like they would any other relish. And potato salads with their hot dogs or hamburgers or even in their tuna fish, but it's a little different. It's a little spicy, so I don't know if I put it in there. Okay, let this stay put. And then next I'm going to add, here it comes, two cups of sugar. Now, we're going to warm this up. We're bringing it up to, a, I don't know, medium boil. Nothing crazy. Just warming everything through, getting everything incorporated, making sure the sugar is totally dissolved. Um, I'm trying to think of how long. About 15 minutes. So see, not too terribly long. Once this comes up to a simmer, a light boil. This thing's heavy, y'all. We're going to can it. Now, to can it, I'm using pint jars because <coughs> half pints are getting hard to find right now. And half pints are not enough for like a whole family meal if you're going to use it for, you know, ham and beans and stuff. Pints work out well. Quarts are just too big. Nobody wants that much. Unless you really, really like it. Okay. It's all mixed in. I'm going to bring it up to cooking temperature. And I'll bring you back. She's been going for about 15-20 minutes. As you can tell, the color is kind of muted now. It doesn't have that same bright green color that it had before. We're going to give it a good stir in. Everything's dissolved. Everything's pretty well cooked through. It's going to continue to cook just from the heat, but I think we're ready. 
If I leave it go, it starts bubbling pretty quick. It's bubbling right now. Okay, so I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to get my jars ready. And we're going to start filling. Now, I'm not sure how many pints I'll get out of this, but we're starting with 11. I'm sure I'm going to need more. I went ahead, got the rest of my jars filled while I'm waiting on this canner. And even though I'm assuming everybody already knows how to do this, I'm going to go ahead and wipe the rims. Hopefully you can see. Okay, maybe if I move you a little bit. I'll wipe my rims. All the jars are clean. Everything is sterilized. Rule number one. Finger tight. Don't wrench it on. There's no need to do that. Just give it a good, good comfortable snug when you tighten it up. That's all you gotta do. Did decide to get two canners going. I scrubbed down the other one. I don't want to wipe the ring on this one. Just to knock off extra rust. Because no matter what I do, my water's going to rust even worse. Alright. I had two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, almost seventeen pints. This one's just going to go in the fridge. So that's pretty good. I did end up getting a half a gallon of the juice. What I'm going to do with it, I don't know. But I saved it. It'll sit in the fridge till I figure it out. Because I'm not going to tackle that today. Alrighty, she's warming up. See a little bit of steam coming off of this one. We'll be back with you. Canner number one is done. I just kicked off canner number two over here. This one's been resting, so this one's ready to remove the jars. Always open away from your face. I gotta move my lid over here because there's no space. All right, let's see how we look. We canned them in the water bath for 10 minutes. Let it sit for at least 12 hours, but they prefer 24. Take your rings off, label it, set it on your shelf, and let this rest for two weeks to a month, depending on how long you can stand to wait, because you want these flavors to marry together. After that, it should be ready to go. know a couple happy folks when they get their hands on some. the 
steam. All right, this one's got to rest for about 10 minutes, and then we can empty it, and we'll see the final product. Canner number two finally cooled down enough. I know you can't see it real well, but opening up away from my face. Yep, it looks rusty. I figured it would. So I'm going to have to clean all my jars. That's why I don't like to use it. It's not terrible, but you can kind of see, see the top. If you look all the way in the corner, you can see the color of the water. This canner is about to become a flower pot, I think. I only paid $3 for it a long time ago, many years ago at a yard sale, I think. So, I mean, I got my money's worth. This one was handy for jellies and jars. But you can kind of see the yuck. Hopefully you can. She just wore out. I'll try to rinse it off a little bit. I mean, they wipe off clean. It's no big deal. It's not a permanent thing. They're just, your jars don't come out near as pretty. And it's not my water, it's the canner. I'm sure we can find another use for it. Alrighty. Just lid back where we got it. And then I will leave these sit because I'm done canning for the time being. I have to bake the rest of the afternoon. Oh, did you hear the ping? I will let these sit on the stove and cool down before I handle them. And if the water is very hot at all, never pour it down your sink. That's bad for your pipes. Take it out and dump it or just let them cool completely. But these guys will have plenty of time to cool down before I return and have to remove them off the stove. I have to scrub everything down really good. The poor kitchen is a mess from all this canning. And then I got to drag out all the baking stuff and maybe I'll throw up a video of some bread. How about that? I mean, I got to do it anyway. May as well take y'all with me. Music. Sweet music. Did you hear the pinging? Now it's not going to do no more. Ping for me. Really? There it is. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me today. Do what you can right where you are. And did you see Mr. Walton back there playing? Here comes Jesse, boy. You might be a little over here. They can see you. They just can't see me. Psalms so 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>